What am I doing? Hit the hit the hit, <laughs> hit the red thing. Oh, unrecorded. No, no, the the intro music. Oh, but we haven't said anything. Vloggy gave us a thumbs up. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Jesus Christ. Oh. Hello. That very, very confused me. Yeah. I think while you were working that out, I, I thought I had no part in it, so I just kind of chilled. Oh, uh, okay. No, you are now master controller. That's quite worrying. Um, where, ugh, where do we even start? Well, Apologies for the massive delay. I think we said that 300 can't times. Can't say that again, really. We but can't the one thing that we can say is on the last episode, which was back in October with Kevin, we said, next time it's going to look very different. And if you're listening to this... Stop it. Go to YouTube. If you're watching this, oh, it's no parkour content on the Motors channel. Look how sexy this all looks. And I'm not talking about my face. I'm talking about everything. Um, took a bit longer to get organized. Yeah. And then I, I think we, it's just, yeah, there's been a lot going on. So now we have no excuse not to do this every week. Weekly is, it's not even the goal. It is what's happening. Uh, and what we're aiming for is a guest every other week. Mm-hmm. Um, so friends will be hitting you up soon and ideally I want to be putting some travel expenses in your pocket to ensure that we can uh, make that happen did Bloggy just touch his mic? yeah I've just All right, let's, ex- let's explain this situation so we can get that out of the way um, if you are basically this is probably going to be the most the, the, the trickiest one if you're listening to it because we might refer to a few things in the room uh, for the first time because this is our new podcast studio space but if you're watching this this is our little corner but on the other side of the room is what I've been referring to as like one four hundredth of the bullet cam rig that the Matrix used to shoot that shot of Neo where it like when it goes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. because we basically have a pole it's actually a TV stand um that goes from floor to ceiling and it's got three cameras mounted on it and behind it is producer bloggy now bloggy if you've been sort of paying attention to motus is a uh, a delightful charming bougie man i can't see his face so i don't know if he's cringing or smiling but he's um concentrating hard and his well, mic turn his mic up well. wait you ready here we go would you like to know something really fun what so um when we cut to to keelan just then the the dad cam the little one yeah had its menu just pop up on the screen of the recording. On the screen on the recording. Amazing. And I was like, ah. This is great though, because what it means, what it means is the more excuses for people to go and actually watch it rather than listen, yeah. the better. Oh, that's great. Well, what, so the menu for the camera popped up on there? Yeah, it killed me for a second. Did, it, did like, it go away? Uh, I had to just carefully touch and then my elbow touched the mic. And that's absolutely fine, that's oh. absolutely fine. This, it's all the there magic of cinema. Oh. Yeah. Oh. But we're, we're all good now. But yeah, so Bloggy is on the other side of the room behind a pole operating a camera switcher switching between our three angles so we have like a wide angle we have the the, the giles angle and the keelan angle mm. um it's all a bit elaborate but really because we want to be hitting this weekly and because we want to get as many guests down this is that we're, we're in our new workshop office thing which we moved into in october um we just want to make it as good as possible mm-hmm. so we want to make it worth the watch and we're now going to be putting it on youtube there will be more parkour content coming. We are working on things, um, but yeah, we we love the podcast. It, we need to do it more, and and this is kind of our commitment. Is like if we're going to do it, we're going to fucking do it. Yeah, we've so, made it more fun for ourselves. I think that's important. Exactly. If it's more fun, then we're going to be doing it more often. Um, we will do a proper episode with Bloggy in the near future, whereby we're going to have to we're going to have to hire a sub producer or something to operate the camera thing. Yeah, get Sam now. Because Bloggy has a story and an and involvement in Motus and, and everything. So that will that will come. <coughs> COVID. Um, what's been going on? I got COVID. That was a while ago. That's- yeah, Giles got COVID and all of us here right now were in close contact with you and none of us got it. So that yeah. was pretty good. But then I gave it to Sarah and, and your baby my, and my baby, which yeah. wasn't ideal. No, but that was like pre Christmas. How, mm-hmm. this is hard but, because but you, you managed to avoid it this whole time and then you got it I know, yeah. and then you freaked out, but it was all right. Yeah. I, I had like half a day where I was like, okay, how bad is this going to get? Yeah. And then it was like, oh, actually this is the most boring, excruciating 10 days of just yeah. watching Netflix and also playing with the cameras. Cause I set up some of this stuff in my true. old bedroom thing. Mm-hmm. Um, We've obviously been seeing each other lots and lots and lots, but what have you been up to? What's been going? I mean, so we moved in here in October, which yeah, was pretty has, mad. What has? 
what have we been up to? It's kind of, it's kind of I mean, we, we released the, the first YouTube video back since we didn't, we didn't mean to take a break, but it's just, we've had lots of stuff going on, but we moved here and Giles made a video of us here. Yeah. And that was pretty good. And things will be. We dropped winter reps. We did a massive load of t-shirts for chase tag, which was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's just been a lot of internal stuff going on and we've tried to capture some of that and there's still more footage to come mm -hmm. out, but it's been tough like to, to know like how, not how much to be sharing, but it's like putting out content sort of fell off our priority. And I don't think it should. I think we need to do it more. Yeah. But I think <coughs> it's good that that happened because we've realized how important it is. Yeah. We, we needed that break but also, to realize. I mean, and it, it does also feel like something's missing because when you're doing a lot of, um, I mean, not me because I'm editing something at the moment, but Charles and Bloggy are doing a lot of things that aren't necessarily they're just numbers and creating. I've just realized we've still got the heater going. <laughs> well, that's going to make noise, isn't it? That's me. It's a very gentle. It's about to go off. Is it about to go off or on? Oh, all right, I'm going to oh. turn that off real quick. I could just start to hear it. Yeah, go Keep for talking. It. Keep no, what I was going to say was, is that, I mean, creating clothes is creative, but without making videos and showing it all that we're missing like a big process and a big routine that Giles was one and me were once doing quite a lot. So I feel like it's, it's felt like something's missing creatively. I, so I, bringing the videos back, it just feels like it stitches the routine of everything back together a bit more. And also like I... I don't know. I quite publicly went through it. Well, I, I guess publicly because I put a fucking post on Instagram about it, but to which actually loads of people said really nice things and I had some amazing conversations. And to anyone who cares, I feel, you know, I'm in much better headspace actually the last few weeks. Um, but have done a lot of like, I guess, thinking and so, you know, it's like, I think it's, just, I don't want to subscribe to the like end of year, next year's new thing, but around mm. that period, because it was like the combo of bit, having COVID couldn't go anywhere. Then Sarah and Daisy got COVID and I was in pure, like Sarah was isolating and like, I, it was all on me to like keep things. So I didn't do work. And then it was Christmas and then new year. And I didn't do anything really motors related for weeks. Yeah. And I started to just like lose my, and I just felt so shit about everything. But I, a big factor is like, I have not picked up a camera. I have not created something. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. In, uh, since Soul Destroyer really. And I was talking to Travis the other day and like, I'm making kind of almost a commitment to myself. It's like, I am going to pick up a camera again, mm -hmm. start filming parkour with no box around it. Like, I wonder if there's anyone listening to this who they're quite young. They don't know Giles's history of filming parkour, but that was your, I know we're, we've gone down that whole of, yeah, yeah. Whole, I mean, we've gone down that. Like most most people that. probably get it. Most but. people get it, but I think maybe some people more see you as just like the business side of Motus, but you were mainly but I filming think the editing last parkour videos and that's now you haven't done that in so long. And the last couple of that. years I've like fallen into the trap of convincing myself that there's always like something to be doing. Mm -hmm. Like whether it's like, oh, I'm predominantly like on my laptop and things. Yeah. And I haven't been out training as much. I haven't been seeing people as much. COVID obviously didn't help. Mm. And I haven't been making stuff. And now it's like, fuck, I just want to make mm -hmm. babies. Did that. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, we went out training two days ago. Yeah. My body hurts. Yeah. So. But, um, but no, I'm excited going forward. And I know we don't want to like make any bold commitments about stuff we're going to do because it's very easy then to fall back on it. And yeah. we have just said that about the podcast, but like the whole point of sort of almost spending a bit of money on this, making it like, I want these, these cameras that we're having here, if, if it looks a little bit off on YouTube, like colors and I think one of them is a little bit blurry because it's a, like a fucking ancient camera. The dream and hopefully will happen in the near future is I'll just buy three matching cameras. Um, mm -hmm. Right now we're kind of using what we had to hand, but what I want to do is make this so easy to do. Like you just sit down and basically hit a fucking button. So the barrier to entry for us sitting down and making a podcast is like zero. Because yeah. before it's like, oh, we need to do a podcast. And we're like, oh, what do we do it about? It's da, 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 da. also the first thing we see when we come in to yeah. work in the morning is that you, we see the camera set up pointing towards the podcast set up. So it's very easy to just yeah, be like, yeah, oh yeah. shit. It's, yeah, it's a very to... like, this is the area for that. Yeah, exactly. And we want to like, yeah, get get guests down, get because we're now mm -hmm. next to a mainline station. So we can pay for someone to come down on the train, like 30, 40 quid. Mm -hmm. They can hang out for a day. We're going to be shooting some other stuff in here with regards to like guests. Um, we've built out the training area, which is still being built at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's sick. Like we're just, we're, we're trying to make as much stuff in house that we can control and like stay reliant on. And then the, the, the parkour content whereby our, what our athletes do is 
it comes when it's ready rather than trying to force it. Because I think yeah. what we learned through COVID is we tried to do team training, we tried to do things like that, but it's really hard to force that. Yeah. I think, especially when it's such a passion drip, like parkour is very, oh, you can do that with passions. It's just hard. We've got so many people that we it's, need to. And it's so hard to go, okay, you like you either say, oh, like Johnston solo video in Scotland or like Jordan solo video, or we try to do yeah. team training, which works, but it was very hard to maintain to a level yeah. that everyone was happy with. And it seems like everyone performs way better within their parkour when they're not put that pressure on yeah and some big things will come out from that yeah and also it's like now there's like people like travis who's like killing it on youtube and it's like you don't want to hinder that mm -hmm. um exactly. but we uh I, I mean i i've sort of made claims somewhat in my head but i think to a few people that like i mean covid i think kind of killed uh an element of what motus once was which was like but also ever but over those two years it's like everyone has grown older and changed and like is in very mm -hmm. different places with regards to like their headspace and also their living situations and things. Cause like yeah. Mo Motus was like, initially it was just me. And then it very much quite quickly turned into like a team of carefree people who traveled about and did loads of things. And now that had like fucking just got, just shut away and couldn't mm -hmm. happen. And it, and it's really, we're, I mean, we're all friends, obviously, mm. but back then it, we, that was like, especially for me, that was my friendship group. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so it was yeah, a very yeah. tight and, and like things were always happening. Yeah. But like all day, every day I was thinking about going traveling, doing parkour and making motors things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, just over COVID things have split apart. And we you can't, can't see those people. We've, we've tr sort of tried to like make it happen and we've tried, but it just, it, it can't happen in the same way that it can for like Storo or Fat or people who live localized to each mm -hmm. other because, and it, we can't force it. So no. it just has to like the project that you're working on, which I mean, do we want to? Yeah, I don't know how much we've spoken about it. And I, I feel like it, it, it I, I'm down to say whatever. Yeah. So I don't want people expecting. So let's, let much. me just finish what I was going to say and then we'll yeah. go on to that. So like, but, but that project is perfect because the, every, the majority of the gang, obviously there's still COVID and mm -hmm. like Jordan can come over and things is back together the content from what I've seen, I haven't actually seen that much, mm. looks fucking amazing. And it has that same vibe. So it's like that kind of stuff will happen when the time's right. Mm. But what we want to be doing is like, and what we sort of have built this place out to do more is turn, like still produce a lot of like motus orientated content, but also give us the capacity to turn the lens outward and like shine some more light on sort of athletes, people, other people in the community and, and things. And we've got some other plans to do with that, that are sort of in the works and coming. Mm. Um, before we talk about that, actually, I do just want to say like, so I, especially at the end of last year, like started to make plans and almost bite off more than I could chew with. Like, basically I wanted to do a collaboration every single month with a creative or an artist or an athlete, like, and, and do like a limited drop and things like that. And then I was like, oh, okay, maybe we do it every six months. And I was almost going to commit to that and like public, like I had all the graphics made up. I'm going to be like, cool. Every other month we're going to have a collaboration and we're kind of still doing that, but we're not putting set dates and things on it. And we're like, it's just, I, I think it's so easy to buy off more than you can chew. And then you, you put a limit on actually what you can do creatively. And also it's, it's so easy not to be happy with something mm -hmm. like, I mean, even that like winter reps collection, which we, kind of rushed out and bloggy was like a huge, huge um, part of, because we needed to get something out for winter. Mm -hmm. Really happy with the products, but the actual kind of everything else around it, the marketing and things was quite limited because we needed to get it out. And then in hindsight, you're like, we rushed it. And yeah. I don't want to do that. So we're working on it. Like we want to be collaborating a lot more and we've, we've got some amazing artists from the community working on stuff at the moment. And it's like, we're doing lots of stuff like that. Artists, athletes, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. But, it'll come out when it's ready and it'll come out and it, and, and we'll make loads of noise, but it'll come out when it's right. And the same is like, we want to do more jams this year. And it's, we, we've kind of already been speaking to some sort of gyms and then also planning things outside. I wanted to do a jam every single month, but Jay, it's, we're halfway through January now and our January one now looks like it won't happen because none of the motors athletes can go. Mm -hmm. And therefore it's like, well, we can't really host a motors jam no, without of athletes. Yeah. So like, we're going to be doing more stuff like that. But I just, I, I think especially personally, I beat myself up and I put myself in a very dark place if I can't achieve what I set out to achieve. And then, so I'm trying to limit that personally. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about well, essentially your project. Cause I'd say you're the, you're basically director of this. Like, yeah, which is f fucking terrifying. First, first time, yeah. It's really, it's really scary. Um, but what I will say on 
the motors thing and everyone getting split apart in COVID, what we did kind of ignited the fire again with, well, just knowing that all of us are still really good friends. Like, yes, all of us have grown up quite a lot. So there are some connections that aren't as strong, but also we haven't been hanging out. So, yeah. Um, but watching all the footage back, it already feels very nostalgic, like spitting in the wind did or whatever. Yeah, yeah, And I'm yeah, already yeah. missing it so much because when I'm with these specific people, I know that I'm not thinking about anything else. Yeah. Which is literally where you want to be. Yeah. So it's still there. It's just not as accessible as it used to be. Um, but I don't know how much I should say without kind of ruining things. I but think, I think no, we've but it's said just, it's a tour. Well, uh-huh. Yeah, it's a tour. I, I don't, the only reason I'm not, I wasn't saying things is because I don't want people to expect too much because I'm terrified of making something bad. But we have got Max editing right now. And Sam, Sam Sutherland as well has been helping out when he's been down. Um, yeah. But I mean, so it basically the guys did a tour. I think we'd have said on a, a previous podcast, mm-hmm. I wasn't involved like at all, aside from basically just like, you know, being like, oh, maybe do this or whatever, like when it came to planning it. Because mm. uh, I was basically getting ready to have Daisy who... I mean, it was probably born a couple of weeks after you came back or something like, yeah. So I was completely out of the picture, which is, it, it could have had, I swear she could have been born she, if she'd come early. Yeah. Towards the end of yeah, the tour. Yeah. Cause initially I was like, yeah, I'll go on the tour. It'll be fine. It was like, no. Yeah. But uh, he did, he did come and meet us on one of the days. So. Yeah. But yeah. it was, yeah, from my perspective, it was very strange. Cause there was zero, like, I don't, wouldn't say I'm a control freak, but I do also like to sort of have control. Yeah. And it was very strange well, to be good. like, cause I didn't like, having control. <laughs> it was very strange to basically sort of to go like, yeah, cool. You guys go off and do this. And yeah. then like, we'll see what happens. And I, all I was seeing was updates in a WhatsApp chat. It's hard um, as well because we're, we're all experiencing different things when we do a tour. So some people would get more scared than others about like, oh, not enough trainings happening or not enough this. The worst part and was- messages would get sent back to Giles and Giles can't do shit. Like he's not, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. his thing. So it was kind of counter, Kind productive. of the most the most communicative people were maybe some of the ones who would get a bit more flustered if like you guys had a late night and didn't yeah. like didn't get out till lunchtime. Which I'm I'm definitely one of those people where it's like oh, and it's also it shows that that kind of ruined not ruined things, but because we stayed in on some of the nights. Like yeah, there were like some do. days in a WhatsApp group I'd, in, in the chat I'd see that you guys mm. like weren't leaving to go to a spot until like one p.m. and I'm like fuck yeah. that's half the day gone yeah, and then yeah. i start stressing but i can't do anything but mm. having seen what, what was that, that noise i think that was a train yeah that sounded well weird um no, i haven't really I've, I've watched bits of footage because you've been showing me bits but yeah. i haven't really like seen all of it and i'm actually fucking impressed at the quality the quantity we got johnston on the camera the story like, like I was kind of nervous, but when you guys came back, I was like, oh no, like what? It did feel like we didn't have enough. Yeah. But then it's because I just think about how much I filmed personally, but we all had cameras. So then when I was cutting selects as well, it was like fucking hell, there's a lot of footage. Like there was obviously a lot of criticism around the breach film and sort of, especially from like the American things. There will be people who don't like this because it's got lots of you guys. Which this is what, this is what people should be careful about because from me hearing criticism from the breach film only makes me more scared to make something like this. Yeah. So when you're thinking about criticizing something, think about someone else who wants to do a similar thing, even if they make something better or whatever, like that's going to make it harder for them. So if it is going to be criticism, you should definitely make it constructive. Yeah. Because now like sitting in there editing, I'm like, fuck, I don't want yeah, because like a reaction. Key, you've like edited that. videos and you helped massively on Spitting in the Wind. Um, I'd say predominantly with the action bits because I did story. Yeah, I've not, I've, the story this is your first time doing story, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, to be honest, the story side of it is way more fun. It's now the parkour editing that I'm finding harder. Which is interesting. Which is weird, yeah, which is really weird. But it's, it's fun. It's just not going to be like, it's not going to be a crazy soul destroyer thing but from what i've because seen it's, because we wanted it not because it didn't happen because we specifically said we weren't doing yeah, it. yeah 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 because last time we did soul destroyer we're not going to make another one of those like the next soul destroyer could be the thing that i want to like i want to start filming and i like filming progressive shit yeah and i don't want to put an end date on that mm-hmm. and maybe it becomes a youtube video maybe it becomes a paid for piece i don't know mm-hmm. all i want to do right now is just start filming and going out and filming with my friends like that's all i'm saying to myself yeah but what this is, is I think something that people have been missing from Motors for the last two years. Yeah, definitely. Like, and it's fucking, for me to watch is lovely. Like yeah. it's, everyone is having so much fun. There's obviously good parkour, there's mm-hmm. stupid shit. Like 
we're not going to pretend it doesn't have like weird motors you know yeah there's lots there's even stuff that we can't put in because when we're together it's like it's not bad but it's like just, we just, we'll, just we'll get a bit, a bit we'll weird. get a bit wild and especially yeah. now that we've got older i don't think we still we didn't think that we still had it in us to get weird yeah yeah and yeah it, and it still happens no, you definitely is, can get weird. which is which is great but um yeah it's i just don't want anyone to feel like paying for it that that they're going to be disappointed with you know that's their money because this isn't this isn't a youtube video and yeah it's going to be we, paid for like yeah this isn't a youtube video it's going to be paid for and also we did put in i mean i didn't but giles and motors basically with fuel and stuff because we did a lot of driving but and also just all of us put in a lot of money and also passion and energy into it i think so also like, something to like i don't know how sort of whether this was like i don't think it was not like, saying that you always have to charge for that no but, no but i think i think something that wasn't I don't I don't know what the, the the financial plan of like the breach film was and, and like with Soul Destroyer the sort of the money that we made was predominantly just like kept in the company and then invested into stock and, and things with the plan with this is like y y so the main editors we basically have a sort of a, a payment split so the, the money mm -hmm. that comes in will some will go to the company and then some will go directly to sort of people like Keelan who basically put more effort in than sort of someone like George who obviously hasn't edited it mm -hmm. but then another percentage will go straight out to the athletes so it's like yeah. your money definitely will literally if you if you buy it will literally go to athletes well, pockets they, because that's and that's, that's something we want to be doing more of with yeah. our paid for pieces because it's such an easy way to then have that exactly you're impact. supporting the athletes and also they did it, it is hard for them because a lot of them do survive off of social media like their own platforms and yeah, yeah, yeah. making instagram content and they had to hold back quite a lot or if they're taking time off of work which like someone like marx has to do and exactly. things like that so it's like so like they they are missing out on money yeah and they are having a great time but then like they can get this is the opportunity for them to get something out of it as well which is really good yeah um but yeah um speaking of money actually little little plug um our patreon the workshop is now a pound we were charging a fiver and and then also one pound um we can't lie we've we've I, I yeah we've neglected the patreon like we still upload to it and and they still definitely have been getting exclusive access to a lot of stuff especially like as we moved in here and mm -hmm. things like this but it's not at the level that we initially set out for it to be at because it's just been hard to maintain um but it's f the people who are in it are actually like the, what the consistent ones are actually the most useful people ever when it comes to product feedback like they get exclusive glimpse like the trousers that by the way anyone who's pre-ordered trousers they are coming out very very soon they're on their way from the factory right now so there's customs and all of that stuff to go through but they it, it's all coming but like those trousers for example they were deciding on colorways and quantities of each colorway like we did polls of their popular ones mm. um and, and yeah, we want to make the Patreon more accessible so we can grow that type of person without charging you a fiver every single month. So you can go and pay a quid. You can pay more if you want. Some of the guys are still doing that, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, a pound, you get exclusive access to so much stuff and and, and increasing amount of stuff because we're, we're trying to sort of ramp it back up. Um, and I, I got some... Yeah, a quid. quid. If you like the the general That's sort of so statement, cheap. Come on. If you if you can afford to have an internet connection and a mobile phone, and if you can basically afford to listen to this, you can probably afford a pound. So mm. give it to us, and then we can do fun things with it. Yeah, like well, it, I mean, we we need focus on the YouTube that yeah. anyway. So yeah, yeah. That, then we'll have more room for that. Yeah, and you'll still get loads of shit on, um, on Patreon, which is good. But yeah, so that's that's a pound, and it'll be in the description of the YouTube video or the put the podcast description mm -hmm. and things like this um i do just want to point out that over i don't know when it was a while ago keelan became a man oh i can't talk about that on the podcast can i i mean i can't what do you mean you got your first tattoo ah you <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> well they can what did you get that. you got fucking uh i got a it's protect a, your neck or something protect your neck <laughs> What is it? It's it's uh, it's an interlude from uh, While She Sleeps' newest album. P.Y. Pro it's 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 like project yourself. <laughs> project no, yourself. it means uh, it stands for place your attention inwards. It sounds like I'm taking the piss. I'm, I, no, the, no, the protect, your, thing, the protect yeah. your neck thing was taking the piss, but yeah, that, no, I know. I, I know. like that. It's P.Y. That. Um, yeah, but just because like the interlude's sick. I really like ambient 
music and stuff. And but I also, never I like them. the little. It's like a. It's like a reminder. Thing. Oh, it's a really good reminder. But I don't actually care about the tattoo. I care about the fact that you finally got a tattoo. Yeah, it's I know. been years of like. And oh, now, oh, and, and I want to get oh, so many more. And we it's went to the so worst addictive. tattoo place in the world, and I got a tattoo on my finger, and it's that it's honestly the worst thing I've ever had. I'm, like. <sighs> Can they see it from there? I thought we went into this tattoo place, right? And I was like, oh, this will be like, I, I thought when, once Daisy was born, I've never wanted hand tattoos, but I was like, oh, maybe I'll get like a little Daisy, like a nice, pretty little Daisy on my finger as like, a, cause it's like, you can't, you can't divorce a baby. You can't kind of like break, like, it's not like getting a girlfriend's name or something. No. Like she's, she's m my life now. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'll get a little Daisy on my finger. And I said it to the tattoo guy and he laughed at me and he had like, Judy across his finger. And I literally was like, you've got a fucking name. And I was like, who's that? And he was like, my daughter. I was like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. But but he he was like, oh, I'm gonna freehand it. If anyone's watching this, this is another reason to go and watch it on YouTube. I don't know if you can see that, Bloggy. I have to swear at the camera because it's on my middle finger. It might not look that bad. It's from not, there, but it's not centered. It's it, incredibly faded. It's awful. It's the work. My mum saw it the other day. My mum only just saw it, right? Yeah. Because I'll tell you this. What does she think? If you want to get hand tattoos, do it just after you've had a baby. Because I have seen my mum every single week since day for the last five months, mm -hmm. right? I've had that tattoo for what, two? And every single so time I've on... handed Daisy to my mum like that, the tattoo's fucking there. Uh, like, yeah. I could literally have like, I don't know, fuck mum across my knuckles and she wouldn't have noticed because all she does is look at Daisy. She yeah. goes, oh my God. Yeah. So I was at her the other day helping her with something on the computer and I was typing and she was like, what's that? And I was like, oh, it's a really bad tattoo that I got. And she just kind of went like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I think I need to get it removed and I still want to get a Daisy. I just want a better one. Yeah. You can but, get, the, um, get the one that is on the motor studies or something. That was it. Yeah, he freehanded it and then immediately afterwards was like, yeah, I can't draw for shit. The amount like, of red flags that popped up when we were there, but we're just like, when you're in that moment and you're all together and you're hyped, it's like, I mean, he was, he's banned from like the pub down the road. And he made that sound like kind of, it was like everyone That's else's cool. problem. But as we got to the end of that session, I was like, yeah, you're, you're the problem here, mate. Like, yeah. And then also when we were going to the pub quite a lot, a lot of the people were like, yeah, just never get a tattoo down there. And we were like, <laughs> well, we've already done that. <laughs> Bloggy um, got a, a thing on his ankle. Yeah. Yours is all right to be fair. Like, I think yours is fine. And then, uh, yeah. I, I like it's and it's small, so it's chill. I mean, yeah, it could be worse. It could yeah. Be worse. <laughs> and then Sam. I love this because we, so to anyone who doesn't understand, Keelan has the soundboard here and he can turn up Bloggy's mic. Yeah, so if I'm really annoying, you just mute me. <laughs> yeah, like that. And then he becomes like a muffled echo in the yeah. background. Um, yeah, and then Sa uh, Southers was with us. And got like <laughs> the biggest one out of all of us. We got, like, Sam got the hung, you know, like if anyone knows the Hungry Caterpillar children's book yeah because he was just he didn't know what he wanted the whole time and it, as soon as it was his go he was like okay fine i'll get this and it was like the butterfly from the hungry but the hungry problem is the hungry caterpillar the what? butterfly's wings are upside down in the book they're upside down like, really if you look at the the way the body because i now have a hungry sick actually it's like a hand puppet ha hungry caterpillar yeah. daisy fucking freaks out you flap it in front of her face and she starts squealing um <laughs> But the body, the wings are like, typically a butterfly's wings are like wide at the top and then they come down and then they go a bit skinny, but they're upside down. So Sam got this tattoo on his arm, but the guy obviously didn't do shading or color, which the Hungry Caterpillar is kind of, you know, very yeah. colorful. So it, to be fair, I think it looks fine it, now that it's healed. It, it, does, it does look fine. I think it looks pretty cool and I think he should get it like filled in yeah, and it, cool because it is, because of the art style, it does look like interesting and free handy. If you just don't know the Hungry Caterpillar, it looks like a crackhead has drawn a caterpillar. Yeah. No, a, a butterfly. Potentially. But it, it's more the fact that the guy did it and then afterward was like, looked at it and was like, yeah, hate it. Yeah. Don't like it. Mm. And was bragging about how he can't draw, but he was like, oh, I can draw, I can do a tattoo, but I can't draw. And in my head, I was like, every single tattoo artist I know can draw. Yeah. Like. Strange. Um, but yeah. What else is on my list? Oh, so. Star Awards happened. Well done to everyone who took part in that. And also well done to Stora for doing that because it's fucking impressive. Um, it was a really fun watch as well. But we've had a good few messages about people asking if the film festival is going to happen. And it is, we don't have any, it, well, I mean, we've got dates on a, on a calendar. We don't have any like concrete, concrete things to announce yet, but we will 100% be doing the film festival because the first year of COVID, I kind of, we didn't do it. We did the editing competition because it was like, well, some people are in like severe lockdowns and things. And it felt a bit, you know, limiting. Mm -hmm. Last year, everything, I feel like it was just, last year was so weird because it was like, things are back to normal, but they're not. Like, uh -huh. uh, this year it's happening. So if you're still in lockdown, sucks to be you, but other people will be out making cool videos and photos and we'll, we'll do all of that. So that's just to let you 
No. Um, the other thing I was going to say is we now have a feature. If you go to the Motors website and you click on the podcast thing menu, uh, there is a feature to send us a voice message and you can send us uh, ideally funny stories or questions, I think would be the two best things to have. Pe so a couple of people have already used it. Someone literally sent nine seconds of silence followed by the word penis. Um, Obviously. I would play it now, but I don't have the phone connector for this thing. I need to find the cable. But um, Next week. Yeah, but you can send in questions, stories, etc. I think the limit's like a minute of recording or something like that. You could technically send more. Uh, but it's fun. And the reason we don't do the Motus Mobile anymore is because some very fucking weird people were just sending like as I in the past described as gore porn. Yeah, no, it's horrible. I've, I've, that's my phone now because I've, I've uh, yeah, lost my one. <laughs> and I completely wiped it because there was just so much disgusting stuff on it. The day we arrived here, the first day moving in, right, we like mm. pulled up in the van, like with a load of shit in it. Keelan jumped out with the camera to film. To film like, on, I think that's the- Is that the, Max having a wee? It's the toilet air, uh, Oh, bloody hell. Sorry for that noise. Um, no, yeah, I think it's because I was on my phone literally making a group chat as we arrived and I got excited and went out to film. Yeah. And it must have been on my lap and fell out the car because that was the only, either that or it's in here still somewhere. Yeah, and it was never seen again. Yeah. It was absolutely, like, it was so straight. And then in the, the course of that day, we then filled this place with shit. Mm -hmm. So it's like... That was buried. the best few weeks of my life not having a phone though. I love it. I, <laughs> and it's not because I don't think they're that bad. I just, just think I'm very addicted to them. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although your, your screen time's considerably less than mine. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm not really addicted to it. It just psychologically fucks with my head for some reason. Yeah, maybe. Just not meant to have them. Um, Me. But yeah, so the, the Motus Mobile no longer exists. So if you, for some reason, have that number stored, it doesn't exist. But feel free to send us a voice message and, and questions. And like, I mean, if we build up enough kind of general questions, we might do like a QA and a episode. Once we know certified guests that are coming like ahead of time, we'll try and give you guys warning because you can send in voice messages. Um, obviously, this is like pre-recorded rather than being live. So if you send in something racist or horrible or whatever, we just won't play it. Well, we might play it and then we'll pause it and then we'll cut it and we'll just call you a cunt. Um, so Max, that. Max, 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 come and say hi. I was going to say that when he walked in because there's cameras there. Hello. We'll just keep, keep, keep all the more reasons for people to head to YouTube. <laughs> exactly. Um, how long have we been going? Does it say? Yeah, 32. Uh, yeah, 30, 30, 32 minutes. Is there anything else we should cover or should we just keep this short? Uh, 30 minutes of music talk. Oh. <laughs> I just love music so much. <laughs> so do I. I love music more uh, than Park. Oh, prod me. That's the discount code. If you want 10% off, <laughs> fucking prod me with this. Um, yeah, if you want if you want 10% off, head to uh, the store and use prod me. We literally don't have any stock. I went on the site last night and I was like, what have we got that's in large? There is one shirt we have that's in large. Everything else is gone. What, and the whole store? Yeah, we, yeah. Don't, ha we don't have any stock. Nice. Uh, but the trousers are coming and then we'll have more stuff coming soon. So apologies for the lack of mm -hmm. stuff there. But thank you to everyone who has still managed to buy stuff because it keeps the lights on, so to speak. Um, legendary. Legendary. Um, I, I, I was thinking, because we listen to so much music, Yeah. do you ever think that it's like bad for us because it doesn't let our brain rest for a bit? Probably. Yeah. yeah, because I, I I like listening to it so much, but I wonder whether it alters subconsciously how I'm like thinking. Yeah, and I did literally actually yesterday and today on both on dog walks, I saw an old lady yesterday who obviously she's probably not gonna have headphones, but I saw a girl kind of maybe my age walking the dog without headphones in. And rather than thinking like, oh, wow, she's appreciating the nature. I legitimately was like, kind of more like, oh, that's surprising. She's not listening to anything. Like yeah. almost like a, that, Kind of, I didn't think like that must be a shit dog walk, but it was yeah. more of like a, oh, unlucky for you rather than- I know, right? Without even thinking about yeah. that. But I mean, I'd, I'd find that harder to not have stuff than it is easier. Mm. But also I know that it's definitely, that's like a moment for you to stop and like gather your thoughts while you're walking around. Yeah. But still it's such a good opportunity to listen to music or a podcast. They call so. it active meditation. Yeah. Like you can get the same mm. sort of, you can you can generate the same like feeling of meditation sometimes if you're in nature and you're just tranquil and peace yeah. you don't have to be huffing and puffing and sitting on the ground that's true um but but i still think music is good because it like 
even if it does pour a certain like emotion in or a thought that might not come up anyway and also it's just fucking sick <laughs> it's just great it's just fun to listen to you just wake so up good. you put on some really miserable music you're having a really shitty morning and you put on some miserable music and you walk around the woods and just feel utterly awful yeah or but you have like you ever tried th this is the thing like that sounds bad but sometimes if i've felt like shit and then I try and put on something quite happy that I usually enjoy. It just makes me feel not, no, not sometimes sad, you it just got, makes me feel aggravated. I'm like, oh. Sometimes you gotta lean into it. And you know, we filmed that thing yesterday and I didn't get the, the, the when did he last cry? So yeah. I was, so you, you, you had that planned, did you? Well, so I, when I was in- Well, wait, that, <laughs> this doesn't make any sense because I don't know what this is. It, it was, so we filmed something yesterday with some questions. To, we yeah. don't, yeah. Good, uh, okay. And, and one of them was, when did you last cry? There you go my when i was in lockdown isolation basically when i had covid sarah and daisy still weren't testing positive not that we were testing daisy until a massive piece of snot came out of her nose and we tested it and she had covid and i felt very bad we knew she did because i like, cry no no it was fucking stressful though like i had to take her to the hospital i thought this was about crying it's gonna be oh sick <laughs> i had to take daisy to the hospital because we thought she her fucking temperature was terrifying yeah. awful but um no so one of the days that i was in isolation that's what I was saying, because Daisy and Sarah still hadn't had COVID, so I was keeping my distance. So I was just yeah. staying on the top floor of the house, basically. I was just bored, bored. And one evening I was just feeling a bit like mopey. And I leant into it rather than trying not to, right? Mm. I watched that video with Adele that I was talking about. You know, where Adele, uh, I think you just, oh, you did mute, Bloggy. You're going for a wee. Oh, he's, oh, he's going for a fag. Yeah. Yeah. No, the yeah, toilet, yeah, sort of the fun. fan on the toilet's like, dick, 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 if yeah. you can hear it. You know the video with Adele where she dresses up to look not like her and she does the same? Oh, yeah, you explained I that. watched that and that actually genuinely made me a little bit like emotional. Yeah. And I lent into it even more and I put, I, I literally went to Netflix. I saw Marley and Me was in the recommended. And you I what? clicked it, went to the bit where the dog dies, watched it and cried and then immediately felt better. Wow, yeah. Like I was just, I felt like I needed to cry and it was yeah. like, it was almost like needing a piss. And I just went like, I watched that <laughs> and I just watched that like 10 minute segment and cause it's horrible. And I had a little cry, like not really like a sob, but like just a little like, Ooh. Yeah, yeah. And then I felt kind of better. Yeah. If it was normalized more like that, I think people wouldn't have such a pro uh, problem with it. Yeah. Cause it's not like you can just choose to cry, but I think it gets harder as- I definitely repress it. Yeah, but it's like, like, but without even trying to, it's yeah. just like, it's so repressed that God, you can't just decide to cry. And then when that moment comes up and you're like, oh, fuck's sake. And it shouldn't be so overlooked. Gotta be a strong alpha yeah. male. Like we piss and shit. Like, why can't we just... <laughs> if liquid comes out your willy, can it not come out your eyes as well? <laughs> Should be the bathrooms for that as well, crying. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Is that why you spend so, so long in the bathroom? Through, yeah, one, two, you're going for a one, two or three. Yeah, yeah. Three is a cry. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But I can't remember the last time I cried. Try it now. So. Imagine if we could. No, I'll just like, you know, entertain you with a story about something else and we'll just see if Keelan in the corner just starts crying. I think I've tried it before, but it's more just like trying to make my eyes water and that doesn't work. Yeah, it's not yeah. crying, you're just making your eyes water. Yeah. But the only time, I think I've more cried when I've just been so confused. I've been so confused that I'm like, uh, an angry I, I, it has to be fully like overwhelmed for me or it's the emotional kind of like vulnerability. Yeah. Like I kind of cried a little bit when I proposed to Sarah, mainly out of embarrassment, I think, because my proposal was so bad, but... Um, <laughs> really? Well, I just did it on my birthday in the morning. Like, I wrapped up the ring as if it was one of my presents and then opened it and was like, oh, this is for you. And then, like, kind of... I had, like, a little speech prepared and then I just fluffed that up. And then it just, like, it... I mean, she she thought it was sweet, yeah. it, but it was a bit lame. And I kind of, like, got a little bit teary and I think I kind of was just embarrassed. <laughs> like, really? Yeah. Uh, it was very strange. But, but I, I, I can't really, because I haven't really put much thought into it, but I don't know how big I am on like grand proposals. Oh, I'm definitely I find them not. Quite, because if I, if it was the other way around and uh, someone proposed to me, I'd just much rather it being a lot more low key, but yeah. meaning a lot, like it's it, not just a random like- I probably should have like- me, but, yeah. but like that sounds a lot nicer. It's in like the comfort of your home and it kind of But then I like went that. snowboarding with Jordan that day, like went down, like that I think, yeah, like, cause it was after Soldestro. You, Jordan was in my house, someone else was in my house, but we didn't tell them cause Sarah wanted to tell her family first. So I just went and had a normal day with Jordan without him knowing. <laughs> oh, for Jordan. Um, I fucking Jordan, if you listen to this or watch this, I miss you so much. I, I sent I sent him a voice message the other day, literally just being like, I miss you. 
Um, He's, you're meant to be here. Yeah. This is where you belong, really. It truly, Not truly in is. the amazing world of... Um, yeah, glorious, yeah. glorious Norway. Um, <sighs> should we just, should we end this and have pizza? Because it's pizza. Yeah, I definitely Fridays. bought pizza. I bought you a pizza. Did you? There's, a, there's a falafel one? pizza in the fridge. No, you're sure. joking. It's, there's two, in fact. Oh my God. So either Max or Bloggy can have the other one. Oh, I'm having it. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, so the idea is hopefully we're having a very decent guest next week. If I haven't actually double checked with him, but he should be here. Uh, if not, we'll probably get someone else down. And tune into this weekly. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you're mm. listening on normal Spotify, oh, you can rate podcasts now on Spotify. So give us a five stars or whatever it is. Um, oh shit, before I forget, when we were talking about the Prodme discount code, I also just want to shout out Jake Chapman, who is an American guy. I don't actually know where he's from, has been writing amazing, amazing blogs for us on the website. He, he basically reached out to me a few months ago and was like, I love writing. I've already written some. Do you want some more? And I was like, yeah, sick. And I've given him a discount code of which he will earn a percentage of revenue. Um, so if you want to go and help him out, then then do that. But I just want to give a shout out to him because it's like, I love these people in the community who kind of like find their own little way of giving some value and, and want to contribute and things like that. So yeah, shout yeah, out to him. Very good job. Yeah, he's got he's got way more coming, really interesting topics and things. Um, oh, and if you're watching it on YouTube, share it around and like it. And yeah, please. And like loads of, loads of comments. Oh, and if you want to like send trinkets and things, like hit us up and we can give you an address because we yeah. want to get this just like progressively more and more interactive and, and fun and things. Like we've got, a, we've got an eight ball here just for the old. That just sounds a bit sexual. Yeah, it? it really does sound <laughs> horrible. <laughs> What's the question? We should ask some, yeah, question each. Am I going to get too drunk tonight? and have to sleep at the office rather than drive oh, home. fuck, I want to get drunk. Because we're going to a special thing. This is such a bad eight ball. What does it say? Don't bet on it. Oh, okay, I'm going home. We're all good. Do you want to do it? What are you doing tonight? <sighs> what am I doing? Well, I mean, you, what, what's your question? Like, um, Am I going to drink just for tonight because it's special? No doubt about it. There we go. Fuck. Basically, I'm not. I, I, I need. I Keenan's trying to be sober. unofficially like stopped drinking. He's trying to be sober, but we're going to an event at a yeah. brew house tap room thing. Yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> that's not gonna happen. Love you lots. Keelan can now hit the sound pad, and we can see if we get copyright striked for this because it's actually a song by Sleep Token, who are a very good band who have a new album out. I'll be um, so sad if we have to change it, but we might would, have to change it. But that's okay. But yeah, knows. send us voice notes. Love you. Bye. Peace, peace out. Thank you, Bloggy. Bye. Oh, wait, hang on. Thank you, Bloggy. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs>